Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about five knives that are better than the trusty old-fashioned K-Bar. Now, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram. As always, the support is very much appreciated. Okay, so starting off with this, unlike Gerber's, I don't really have a strong hatred actually to the K-Bar USMC fighting utility knife that this blade is. And in fact, it's kind of had some funny iterations like the space bar and some practical modernization, such as the, uh, I think it's the 1213 with the Kraton handle, but still the same classic blade shape and overall design has existed for many decades. And I think this knife is about as American as apple pie. It's one of those things that was kind of first born out of World War II and just kind of stuck around. Now, this knife is... <laughs> Now, as far as this knife goes, when it comes to its kind of uh, lifespan and use, of course, it's been extensively used by the military, and that means that, just like many other military knives, woodsmen, like myself, have gotten their hands on this knife and tested it. But I will say a lot of people that I have watched on YouTube and, in general, in the wilderness, uh, really have grown to despise the K-Bar for a handful of reasons, primarily due to the fact of its notable weakness. Now, I will say, like I said, I don't really have too much against the K-Bar myself. As you can see, mine is pretty well worn and uh, definitely has been used and abused quite a bit. And uh, honestly, through my use, I have never really obviously broken this one or had it loosen up or really had any or really had any consequential side effects from actually hard using this K-Bar. So for me, I don't really think it's actually a horrible knife, but a lot of people do. So if you are in that camp, let's talk about some blades that would be better. Now, I tried to incorporate a wide variety of knives, uh, different budgets, different uh, different budgets and different sizes. Admittedly, a lot of them are SE or SE inspired products, but let's start off with the first one being the Cold Steel SRK. Now, this one is a little bit smaller than the good old fashioned K bar by a few inches, but I think that realistically speaking, it's not too far off. And being that it is a stout and robust wilderness blade and the SRK having a great track record itself, I think it'd be hard to go wrong with a cold steel SRK. And in fact, the fact that you can get these for under $50 all day long and the performance is very well known with them, I think it's overall a really solid choice. So the cold steel SRK is definitely the first one that is better than a K-Bar. So stepping up in size and in price a little bit is going to be the Rat 7. Now I would say that if you are looking for a direct comparison or you just want a more wilderness oriented, uh, you know, better for wildlife, better for survival, better for camping, if you're looking for a blade in that regard that is very comparable to the K-Bar but just better at wilderness tasks, the Rat 7 is probably the best choice. As you can see here, it is the same blade length or it has a 7 inch blade just like the K-Bar, so it is reasonably similar in size. I think actually the Rat 7 is just slightly bigger, but it is going to be the closest in size to the K-Bar, so if you like that seven inch long blade or six inch long with, you know, a little bit extra in the choil, um, this is probably going to be your close closest option. And on top of that, it is also the closest in price to your traditional K-Bars. Of course, there's like the D2 model that's a bit more expensive, but uh, for as far as your classic K-Bar, this is about $88 and your Rat 7 is about $70. So closest uh, in comparison to size and in in size and in budget. So aside from that, once again, you're gonna get pretty good ergos. Now the Rat 7s are known for being a little rough around the edges in comparison to SE products, but as far as it goes, it is still, especially with gloved hands, plenty comfortable and most importantly, plenty functional. So that is the Rat 7. And uh, like I said, it's just the closest in size and overall size and budget. Okay, so stepping it up in price and in size quite a bit is going to be the 
Ontario knives, RTAC 2. Now the RTAC 2 is very similar to the SE Hoogless 2 or SE Hoogless, but uh, if size is really your thing and the K bar, the small K bar in comparison to the RTAC 2 is not enough, then the RTAC 2 is going to be the next kind of step up. Now, like I said, this one is much bigger than the K bar, but you can get RTAC 2s without Kydex sheaths for around $90 to $100. So that still puts them very close to that $90-ish price range that your K-Bars are running in. So overall, the RTAC 2 is pretty comparable in price, but if you are looking for something that's a little bit more outdoor oriented, and you want something that has a bit longer blade, something that's a little bit more batonable, if you will, uh, something that's a little bit more chopping oriented, the RTAC 2 is gonna be a better step up. Like I said, it is quite a bit of a size jump, but I thought I'd throw it in there because the price point is reasonably similar enough. And even with a Kydex sheath like you see here, you're looking at still about 100, even and even with a Kydex sheath like you're seeing here, you're still looking at about $120 total. So like $90 for the knife, $30 for the sheath. And that's still right around the same price point as the K-Bar Extreme in D2. So definitely still very comparable in price to the good old K-Bar. Now let's wrap it up with the last two on the list. So the last two are going to be SEs. You have your SE6, which has a lot of properties of the RAT7. It's just a little bit more refined. And ultimately, this one is kind of geared towards if you were looking at buying maybe a higher end K-Bar, like I said, like the D2 Extreme version, maybe you should look at the SE6. It is slightly smaller than the K-Bar, as you guys can see there, just a little bit. It's really not too much smaller, but it is very comfortable, very capable. The SE6 is one of my favorite outdoor kind of utility blades, and uh, it is just really a fantastic uh really fantastic multi-role blade and I really do enjoy it quite a bit and once again you know towards the upper end of the K-Bar scale it is definitely still in there and uh, very much a contender very comfortable very wilderness oriented though okay and last but not least we are stepping all the way down to the smallest knife in the list so if the SRK or the uh, K bar are just a little bit too big for you. There is the SE4. And the SE4, once again, still kind of in that $100 range. So, right around where the K bar is. If you are really just looking to step into a really capable, pretty competent little blade, the SE4, I would say, is where it's at. First, I really did not love the SE4, but it has been growing on me. And I'm enjoying using it more and more just because it's a really thick, really robust and durable or stout blade, but still reasonably compact with that four inch blade length. It allows you to make it a very carryable knife for doing things like hiking or trekking or camping. And uh, that four inch blade length is pretty capable for a wide variety of tasks. Now you won't have the baton ability of some of the larger offerings and similar to the original K-Bar, but at the same time, you still have a very stout and very realistic blade for doing a wide variety of wilderness survival tasks. All right, guys, that is five knives better than the original classic and much loved K-Bar knife. K-Bar fighting utility knife. Okay, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.